High fidelity prototypes are no longer optional. Gone are the days of simple static screens that we all sit around in meetings and go, how does that work? How does that animate? How does that transition? I don't know, the developers will figure it out. We needed a better solution and that solution has come in the form of ultra high fidelity prototypes. So now you can without a doubt understand what that screen's supposed to do, what that animation, that transition, or that experience is supposed to feel like for the end user. What's the difference between low and high fidelity prototypes? How should you be creating these high fidelity prototypes? And why should you even care? Is it worth your time? We're talking about all that next. What's the difference between low fidelity prototyping and high fidelity prototyping? Well, low fidelity prototyping is easy. That's that initial kind of learning curve into prototyping. You opened up Sketch and you went screen to screen. Click on this button, slide, push, transition, dissolve, whatever, to the next screen. Great, look, we're tracking the user's movements through our flows and through our screens. Doesn't that feel good? Eh, kind of, but it leaves a lot of things wanting. We're still not really sure what that transition looks like or what the timing should be. Is there a loading indicator here? What was that gonna look like? We're not really sure. That's where some of our favorite tools have come in and elevated our low fidelity prototyping to something a little bit more classy, a little bit more refined that I like to call the mid-range prototyping. You mid-range prototypers know what I'm talking about. You open up XD, you open up Figma, you chuck some video in that thing, some sound, you do some timed animations. Maybe you hook things up to your keyboard or your Xbox controller. You're using components and, and component states and animating back and forth. Now we can prototype loading animations and buttons that have different animated states. Wow, this is really great. But even this level of prototyping is lacking at the end of the day. So what's the problem with these levels of fidelity? They seem to be working for the most part for a lot of people. Why do we need something better? What's wrong with low or mid fidelity prototypes? The first big problem is clarity. And there is a lack of clarity when it comes to these levels of prototype. Lack of clarity when we're trying to test with our users. Lack of clarity when we're trying to sell our designs to stakeholders. And lack of clarity when we're trying to hand things off to engineers. We shouldn't have to ask people to use their imagination. We shouldn't have to explain what something's gonna look like once it goes to code. We should be able to demonstrate it and show it. And so we need to find workflows and tools that will help us and allow us to do that. Now, a lot of people's first thought when I say find other tools to help us bring that clarity, to bring that definition and that high fidelity is people are gonna think about opening up After Effects. But the problem is that that tool is not meant for product designers and UI and UX designers like you and I. That tool is meant for animators. That tool is meant for video creators. That tool is meant for people who want to make explosions in superhero movies. On top of that, technology is changing way too fast for us to be using these old subpar methods of prototyping. We're talking about augmented reality, virtual reality are becoming the reality. The metaverse is right around the corner. Apple is developing some sort of virtual or augmented reality device or headset for us to wear. I want to recommend a solution that I found that gets me as close as humanly possible to the end result and I think it's probably gonna blow your minds if you've never used protopi it's pretty sick it's pretty amazing I'm not gonna lie it has lots of capabilities lots of features for you to actually tap into devices native functionality and actually get really super ultra high fidelity prototypes where there is no lack of clarity there's no lack of understanding there's no imagination required there's just pure demonstration let me take you in and show you just a little bit about protopi and I'll talk to you on the other side we do high fidelity designs and then we try to prototype those high fidelity designs. Like I would link these buttons and it would click to the new page and I'd maybe click this and now if there's video inside of Figma, I'd, yay, you know, the video could start playing and that could be really, really cool. But, you know, these are some basic interactions and some basic things that, you know, for the most part, that it works, but what if I wanna do more complex things? Well, I'm gonna jump over to another project that I did. This is a mobile application. Um, and I actually did some mid-range prototyping to it, right? Like we get into the, the prototype, you can actually scroll like 
these horizontal scroll groups and you can see which areas are clickable. So I could click on search. Can I type inside of the input field? No. So I have to preload it. I have to fill it with some text as an example, right? I'm going, hey, I don't want you to imagine what it looks like to have text in there, but I, I can't do live inputs. So I'm just going to put something in there. So I'm kind of asking you to use your imagination a little bit here. Imagine just for a second that you, you know, typed in the word music. Oh, okay, cool. Now we go back. That is imagination. That is lack of clarity. And that's why we want something a little bit better, right? So I want to design something a little bit more complex. And to do that, I'm going to introduce you to Protopie. I'm going to open up Protopie and I got a couple of files open and you can see it looks really, really similar to a lot of other tools that you've probably used. It has a layers panel on the left, contextual panel here on the right, but it really has a lot of things that maybe you haven't seen where we are kind of creating triggers and we are actually creating interactions in really complex ways. This allows us to do things like, for instance, say, hey, I really want this side area to be like a liquid drag kind of transition. Well, how can you do that inside of something like Figma? I can't go over to my Figma file and I can't liquid transition this. Like at best, what I can do is make it kind of smart animate and pop over. But over here inside of Protopie, I can actually grab this thing and I get a lot of this fun kind of liquid bounce nature. Wherever I drag and release, it has some natural kind of like fun and wiggle to it, right? You can't do this in something like Adobe XD. You can't do this in Sketch. You can't do this in Figma. Let's take a look at a few more really cool examples that you can create inside of Protopie that you can't create anywhere else. And then we'll actually come back and we'll build our own using that tricky little search input text box that we couldn't do in Figma. We're gonna build it here together really, really quickly. Here's a really fun scratcher ticket kind of concept where we want to be able to scratch away this ticket. I'm just going to press preview really quickly and you can see um, we get this really fun little like scratcher ticket here. It tells us to peel. And as we peel, we actually, <laughs> we actually get some fun like prototype here. Like it's really, really, really cool. And then we get a really specific like fun kind of transition. We can play again and just keep scratching and on and on we go. Here's another really cool one. This is a movie rating app with a lot of complexity. Not only can we like open up like really cool triggers. Now you could do something like that in Figma and you could do a little bit of these drag gestures in Figma actually. But what's really cool is this is actually built out of multiple complex triggers and animations. So the idea being like, I've taken this thing and I can actually kind of like move it anywhere I want. If I move it to the left, I'm saying maybe I like that later. If I move it to the right, I'm adding it to my watch list. I move it down. I'm saying I never want to watch this video. And as I move it up, I actually start to rate it. Ooh, is it five stars? Yes, it's five stars. The level of fidelity on a prototype like this leaves zero things lacking, leaves zero issues to be discussed later. It's all clarity, all fidelity, all the time. Now, a lot of these prototypes are really, really complex. They're really, really intricate, but that's to show you what is possible here that's not possible in other places. And there is a learning curve, but I'm going to put some helpful resources down in the description for you to start learning Protopie. It's a super great tool, but right now I'm just going to walk you through a really simple example of how you'd get started. We're back in Figma. We have our design. We love our design and we know that we want to be able to actually search this input box, unlike that other one that I showed you earlier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the Protopie plugin that is for Sketch, it's for Adobe XD, it's for Figma. So you can design right here inside of Figma, do all your work here, and then simply export everything and punch it out into your new Protopie project. I'm going to head over to Protopie first before I do anything. I'm going to start a new project, all right? So we have a brand new project here. It's got one scene. It has no layers. It has no triggers added. It is ready to go, okay? And with this project selected, I'm going to head back to Figma with my artboard selected, and I'm going to export it, right? We can see it doing the magic. Boom. It transferred my design over to Protopie perfectly. This is Absolutely amazing. We can press preview just like this. You can see the design. It looks flawless. All the elements are there inside. And if we want to now, all we have to do is add a specific type of element onto the screen and we're going to make that an input field, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to insert. I'm going to go to layers. I'm going to find an input. I'm just going to drag a little input layer out like this 
and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And you can see it says find in like song. So I'm just going to drag it right about there. That works. With our input field placed, I'm going to head over to my contextual panel and you can see the placeholder text there. I'm just going to say find songs or something like that. That works great. All right. Now we see it's replaced the placeholder text. I like that. Now I actually want to uh, like just style the, the box itself, the input field itself. So let me come into there and just say, what color is it? We want to make sure it's white so it matches the rest of our project. See how it just blends in perfectly? I've just popped an actual element right on there. Now look how simple this is. I'm going to press preview. And as soon as I click inside, boom, we get a native actual keyboard that pops up. We can actually on our keyboard, we can actually start typing here because I'm on a computer. But also something else we haven't talked about yet is, man, if we want to actually see this on our native device, all we have to do is press device and we get a QR code to scan. So with that done, I'm actually going to open up my ProtoPie app and you can see that it has a spot for me to scan QR codes. And now I'm going to go ahead and scan that QR code. It's grabbed my prototype and it's immediately placed it on the screen, right? So now look, you can see we type in there and we can actually start typing inside of our input field. Now from there, I could add all sorts of functionality. I could actually use that text input field to filter out the song. So as I'm typing, it's actually finding specific song titles and artist names. And it can do all of that and more like some of the designs that I've shown you today. You should definitely check out ProtoPie. All right, that's just skimming the surface of ProtoPie. I love this tool. Lots of large companies are using this tool right now. And the reason is because it gets you way closer to that end result, to that finished product that the users are actually gonna see. Because stakeholders can buy in and say, oh, that's what that's gonna do. That's what that's gonna look like. And developers are gonna love it because they can actually pull up their mobile device or their device, launch the prototype, and actually use your prototype in comparison to theirs. There's no misunderstandings anymore. There's way less documentation needed, and it's just faster to market. It's faster to code. It's faster to get your products actually built. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. Also, check the description below for some helpful links to ProtoPie's website, their learning resources, their YouTube channel, as well as a link for you to get started using ProtoPie today. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments. Hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you design amazing things, make amazing things, and use tools that bring your designs to life. See you in the next one.